Welcome to By Faith with Frank Shelton. Frank speaks at the schoolhouse. The church house and has even been interviewed at the White House, but is most grateful to speak life into your house. Now, here's Frank Shelton. Hi, welcome to another edition of By Faith. I am your host, Frank Shelton, and my, it's my high honor today to have the love of my life on the show. I couldn't wait for Ruth to officially be on the set. And uh, Ruth is the first female guest. And uh, coming up in uh, weeks to come is our mutual friend, Aisha Woods. Aisha is so good, I've already booked her to sing at my funeral because I'm dying to hear her one more time. But Ruth, welcome to the show and just tell our viewers hello. Hello, Frank. It's great to be with you oh, today. Sweetheart, I'm honored. Uh, I usually catch the plane from D.C., Maryland to come here and tape, and I'm usually Ruth Liss. But man, what a treat to have my bride with me today. It really is a team effort. And Ruth, I just want to thank you for publicly not only believing in the Lord, but believing and us, and I couldn't do what I do without you. Um, I want our viewers to hear your story. Uh, they say behind every good man is a great woman. The fact is I'm just the fortunate one to spend life with you. And I want you to take us back. You were born in El Salvador, a preacher's daughter, and you were in a war-torn country and uh, where you didn't have a lot of money. God gave you a lot of faith. And just tell us how you came to faith in Christ while living in El Salvador? Well, uh, as you know, Frank, and everybody who knows me knows uh, my family. I grew up in El Salvador, and uh, it's a third world country, and I grew up in the middle of the war, mm -hmm. the civil war in, in my country. And uh, um, I grew up in a Christian home, as you know, and my father is a, is a preacher for 50 years. And um, but uh, in the Bible, in the Sunday Sunday school, actually, they taught us to to receive Jesus Christ in our heart. And at the age of seven, I I I raised my hand in the in the Sunday school and accept Jesus Amen. Christ and invite Him in my heart. At the age of fourteen, um, I baptized, and I just loved the Lord, and I wanted to just to serve the Lord when I was a, a, a teenager, when I was a child, and I just grew up to, you know, serving the Lord as a, as a pastor's family. We always were serving the Lord. Mm. Amen. Yeah. And tell me, um, you know, I've always been touched by your testimony. Um, they say if you didn't have a test, it wouldn't be much of a testimony. Mm -hmm. And you guys really had just such humble upbringings but you were in circles around so many with your love for life, love for the Lord. And tell us um, some of the values that your parents instilled in you as a young girl. Um, I remember when I, when I was little, just, I just grew up uh, seeing my parents uh, serving the Lord. My mother was a, a Sunday school teacher yeah. with the kids and my father preaching not only preaching in, in the church that where he was pastor, but preaching and around the places around his his um, church. But uh, he went to preach for weeks and weeks and sometimes months. Um, uh, revivals and and God used him and his family, um, saving souls for the Lord. And and that's it's a joy always. I remember uh, those times serving the Lord in, in El Salvador. And uh, this is how the, the church grew up. Uh, because uh, science, there was a, a war. Uh, there was not much future. Mm. We didn't see much future. And so 
it, it lo at least we had Jesus in our heart. That's what it, what, what it matters and still matters Amen. these days. Did you grow up with a lot of fear growing up as a child? Yes, uh, actually, when I was little, you know, I was in the seven. It was in the seventies, but uh, at the early eighties, that was the most severe um, situation that I, it got worse. Mm -hmm. And that's when, in the late eighties, uh, I, I, I had to escape. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, looking for a better future for me. Uh, there was no future studying in the university after I graduated from high school. There was no future, and so I. Um, my sister and I decided, and my brother already came before us, and we moved to Dallas, Texas. But I, we came here as escaping, escaping right. the war. Wow, that's amazing! And what's wild is you left El Salvador to and US, and I left by faith. And you left by faith. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the absolute main things that really drew me to you is yeah. uh, not only did I just know you're absolutely beautiful, but I admired your faith. Um, because that's what really sets you apart from so many people. So you leave completely by faith. God brings you to Dallas, Texas. Um, Ruth is a Cowboys fan. I'm a Redskins fan. Opposites of track. Can I get an amen? <laughs> but uh, yeah, they say a house divided against itself can't stand, but we've been blessed. Um, but God blessed you. You had a dream, and uh, you got working at this Christian radio. And you yeah, really... uh, before, before being in, in radio, I, I, I was working as a housekeeper, mm. and I was listening at Christian radio station those days, and I, I really wanted to, to, to work one day. And finally, I knocked the doors, and 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 it was an opportunity for me to start uh, uh, working on weekends. I was volunteering actually in the beginning, because I really loved, because it was a Christian station. Uh. It was a way to communicate with people, and I, I am, as you know me, I am a people person, even a little introvert sometimes, but yeah. I, I love people, and I, I, I love to see God moving in, in churches and, and serving the Lord, and that's why I, um, I started working in the radio station in Dallas, Texas in 1990. Yeah. That was the first time I, uh, I started, and... Um, then I and I had to get some trainings and learn more about radio and here I am. Uh, but I, it was it took time and I thank God for for what um, the people the Lord used at them, especially um, there is a man who is already with the Lord, uh, brother Jose Alfredo Castillo, who who introduced me to the radio and said I always will be um, grateful to the Lord for his life and used him to. Um, introduced me to the radio and his wife, Janet, if he's watching, she's watching. Uh, she's, she continues the radio station and, and the legacy of uh, Brother Castillo. And that's how I, I started in, in the radio industry too. Amen. And that's another thing that I've always admired you because this isn't an ego trip. It's a missions trip. Yes. And what I love about the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, they said they used every means possible, whether it be newspaper, um, radio, television, movies, mass crusades, or passing out gospel strikes on the street, they um, really saw the power of what the media, where the media can be bad, but used for good purposes, can do a lot of good. Yeah. And uh, God gave you a voice, He gave you a platform, and you humbly served the Lord. So you left El Salvador to come to the States by faith. And this is a thing that really touched me is you were willing to leave Dallas by faith and yeah. come all the way to the East Coast and I think your boss offered you three potential major cities what were those cities again that was New Mexico one um, it was uh, another in the West uh, others um, I think it was California in those times in Washington DC yeah. those three and the irony is you didn't really know anybody in Washington no, not not at the moment. We had some relative, but uh, we never uh, socialized in the past because they came so uh, long time ago. Right. So I didn't basically know any. And you and your anybody. dog, and faith in God, packed up everything you owned in the car, and you drove by faith by yourself. Yes. God above and your dog beside, and y'all yes. drove halfway across the country by faith to start. Uh, of, of yeah, ministry from, with the Christian radio station in Washington. 
That's exactly, um, that was, uh, that's a long story, uh, but a God was in control of everything. I remember when they introduced me and they said, uh, uh, if I wanted to take the position and I was praying and I asked uh, my father to, you know, to, I, I wanted to have his blessing. That was, that was going to be the, the Lord's confirmation that I was, that I was going to be moving. And thank God I, I had, I had nothing, but I had a lot of faith and, wow. And God, God has been good, and Amen. He's showing me all uh, many ah uh, time will not enough to to tell all uh, what God Amen. has done in my life. Amen. Yeah, what I love, uh, Ruth, is that um, you really have a heart to serve the Lord, and I just wonder, very few people would have been willing to step out by faith, go out on a limb, and God gave you a clear call, and. Uh, I often think that if you didn't come to Washington, uh, we would have never met. And no. that was the sovereignty of God, yeah. but it was also the faith that God put in you. And uh, what would you say to somebody watching today that it's one thing to have a dream, but it's another thing to have an assignment from God. What would you say to our camera to just encourage them to step out and follow their, their dream? Yeah, um, that is uh, every God. God is in control of this world, and uh, I think the base is if you don't have God in your life, invite Him to, to, to your life and ask Him to be uh, your friend. He works with you uh, every single day in your uh, journey, and if, if you tell Him what do you decide to do, just tell Him as, as you can tell a friend, tell God. And he will answer all your prayers and just trust him. If you don't know him, trust him. Amen. You know, I think uh, God's honored your faith. I really believe, show me your faith and I'll show you your future. And if we don't have faith, we won't have much of a future. And I just want to tell those who are watching today that if you've never trusted Christ as Savior, today's your day. And um, Ruth, so you come from a war-torn, poverty-stricken country as a child of God and a kid to a pastor. You leave by faith to El Salvador, and then God opens the door for you to come to Washington. And you helped WWGB as the station manager to build a station from scratch. And you yeah. guys now have the largest Christian Spanish radio station in DC, Maryland, Virginia, as well Philadelphia as Philadelphia. And Richmond. And it just started with obedience. Um, tell us uh, about WWGB. Well, this is a Christian uh, radio station since uh, 2001. We are there serving the Lord, and uh, I have seen a lot, of, a, lot of, um, a lot of miracles performed by the Lord, and God it has been good to me and to all that stuff. We have a great stuff. But uh, uh, this world needs people who believe in Jesus, trust Him with all their heart, and uh, we have to mark a difference in this world and just love people. WWGB is a great radio station, and uh, a lot of people have been restored and received Jesus uh, in their hearts. Amen. And uh, Ruth, God has honored your faith. Uh, one of the favorite pictures we have in our house is, that I'm most proud of is a picture of you and uh, the president of El Salvador actually taken in the White House. Uh, you were invited, I guess it was by President George yes. W. Bush. Yes. And, um, and then here, you've been blessed to board Air Force One. And, yes, um, actually, yeah. I believe those who come the furthest go the farthest. Hmm. And uh, it's just amazing what stepping out by faith can really do. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, one of my favorite Psalms is uh, Psalm 112. And he will, I don't know the translation, but uh, I will explain it's, it will sit me with the prince of his people this is what it says Amen. part of that psalm and and i really believe that scripture has been yeah fulfilling myself Amen. no there's no doubt and ruth has been with everyone from pulpers to presidents and uh, mm -hmm. uh i remember we had a chance to spend some time uh with pastor joel osteen and mm -hmm. that guy spoke into multiplied millions and one of my favorite pictures is you speaking life into him and uh, I just thought that was a neat picture because uh, even encouragers need encouragement. Uh, Ruth and I, not long ago, had a chance uh, to keep catch up with our friend, 
Linda Tate Randall. She is known around the world with the Gaither Homecoming videos. And uh, her brother, Michael Tate, is also one of my heroes. Michael was with DC Talk from our region, Washington, DC. And uh, Michael was on my old radio show the week he joined the Newsboys. And Michael and I had the chance to minister together in the Bahamas. And that brother from another mother is being used around the world. But on this next edition of Frank and Friends, Ruth and I were in Salisbury, Maryland with one of the great voices of gospel music. Let's go to that clip. And I want to go ahead and take you now to see Linda Tate Randall and us in Salisbury, Maryland. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Frank and Friends, and I am with the one and only Linda Tate Randall. Her brother is Michael Tate, lead singer of the Newsboys, formerly DC Talk, but no one sings gospel music like you. And Linda, man, I love that song that you sing, Walk With Me, Lord. Yes. And then On the Mountain and His Eyes on the Sparrow. I love eagles, but man, nothing like a sparrow, eh? Well, I know that's right. I know and, that's and God has given you a gift like none other. And what is your all-time favorite Southern Gospel song? Well, I guess the one that I do with Bill, God on the Mountain, the one that's requested the most yeah. is God on the Mountain. Okay. And I, I, I laugh a lot because I go, I'm not even Southern Gospel. The God has a sense of humor. I don't even know how I got here other than God's, Amen. That's God's supernatural, whatever. You know, but it's amazing. But I, lo I love God on the Mountain. I love a lot of the Greek songs. You know, I totally well, we love you. You know what's neat about a mountain? It's just an upside down valley. Yeah. Oh, wow. So when God flips, no matter how low you are, be how high you are. Oh, yeah. She sang so good. <laughs> My wife's recording this, but if I could die tonight, oh, no. I would have to sing at my funeral. <laughs> I'm well, dying to hear you, well, no, well, don't, don't die anytime soon, man, but, but just the, call me if he does. Okay? Man, the one and only, just last thing, what's your favorite verse? Psalm 8411 says, The Lord God Amen. is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I love man. the Psalms and Proverbs. Well, you know what? I love you. I love you. And thank you so much. You're so welcome. God bless and go with God. Hi, I'm Frank Shelton. I have a passion for God and evangelism. I'm an author, international speaker, and part comedian. But most importantly, a full communicator of God's great gospel. I'd love the opportunity to speak at your church, group, conference, or special event. Don't delay. Visit frankshelton.com today to learn more about my ministry and how I can be a blessing to you. The word of the day is when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. 150 years ago, Joseph Gales was a policeman in our nation's capital. He was later assigned to the White House and grew as personal friends with President Abraham Lincoln. On Good Friday, 1865, he escorted President Lincoln to Ford's Theater and was one of the first officers to respond when he was shot. On that unforgettable night, he carried the 16th president across the cobblestone streets to where America's most beloved president would die the next morning. Joseph Gales is not the entire story. Joseph is his first name, Gales is his middle name, but Shelton is his last name. Ironically, what are the odds? One of my ancestors planted in life the cherry blossoms, and my other ancestor carried the president in death. The Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. You may not believe in God, but God believes in you. Divinity deposit his DNA in you, and you were made in his image. The Lord makes no junk. 2,000 years ago, Mother Mary was pregnant with the Son of God. She carried greatness and was the first to carry the gospel and God in the process. David, with a slingshot and a couple stones, carried greatness, not in his hands, but his head and heart. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. David toppled Goliath in private way before he destroyed him in public. Greatness comes with a price. Joseph, with a coat of many colors, had haters. They were not jealous of his colorful coat, but the colossal call of God on his life. In life, you can carry greatness or bury it. 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. carried greatness with the clarion call to let freedom ring as he helped pave the way with the march on Washington, speaking on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, delivering one of the greatest speeches of all time. His dream ended the nightmare for millions of African Americans, and with the Lord's help, they overcame. But like Lincoln, died in right to others' promised land. What went through the head of Joseph Arimathea the day on Good Friday at Calvary when he begged for the body of his Lord? What courage to confront Pontius Pilate, whom just sentenced that his Savior be slain? Today, will the real men and women of God stand up? We've been sitting out for far too long. As Christ climbed the cross, he embodied grace and greatness and took on our sin. He truly set the people free. God used a borrowed womb with Mary and a borrowed tomb of Joseph to be the bookends of Christianity. Today, the God of the universe is looking to not only borrow you, but indwell in you for eternity. Christ died and rose again that you could live. Yes, my ancestor carried the closest to the king of a nation America will ever know. What an honor. But we don't just carry the president or a preacher in their death, but the living prince of peace in our lives. It is one thing to carry an earthly king, but we carry heaven's only king by our life and our lips. We all carry greatness, but it is entirely and eternally different when greatness carries you. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. The signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today. Welcome back, and uh, I just want to encourage you to go to my website, frankshelton.com, and on the top right-hand corner, we got a new thing. It's actually the Amen Corner, and my wife and I are sharing our story of faith. I was always told, you want to make history? Tell his story. Go on the top of that Amen Corner, click on it, and share your story of faith, where a community of believers and even those curious about the Christian faith can read what others are saying, how God's speaking to your life how you're stepping out in obedience, and I want to encourage you to do just that. Um, Ruth, um, for those who are just tuning in, you left by faith from El Salvador. God used you in Dallas, and then you left by faith to come to Washington. And a lot of times um, people ask how we met, and you had been praying. You had a piece of paper. You were praying specifically for what you wanted in a Christian man. Uh, do you want to just uh, share what maybe that those notes you had privately between you and God, what it looked like? Well, I was, I was praying always as a single woman, you know, to, to meet someone who, who fears the Lord, who loves the Lord, and of course, uh, someone who will be attracted to me. And I was praying a long time ago uh, for, uh, for a man who, who, who kind of similar like my father's. I was telling that story not recently, and, and, and I... I was, I was looking at that time when I, before I met you, um, someone, a leader in, in the county that we are serving as a radio station, and I was, I was uh, uh, getting some contacts, and, and then I, I found you there, and uh, I remember that uh, we, we mentioned in the, one of the previous uh, shows that, um, I, one one time I was praying the Lord that the man who surprised me with roses will be the one because I was thinking you know any any man gives women's uh, roses so I thought you know it will be the one I will, it will be easier for me to to see that one but mm. what happened was that never <laughs> I never got uh, roses I got flowers so, so, uh, people send me flowers different flowers but n not roses, never. <laughs> yeah, and the irony is I didn't know that. And, um, <laughs> you had no you know, idea. When I first saw you, you And I was not going to tell you anything right. either. <laughs> well, I just did it because, you know, um, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, and Ronnie Millsap <laughs> could see how good you look, and they're all three blind. <laughs> but I just knew, and, and we were married within four months, similar to Paul's story, and you interviewed me on the radio show, and I just couldn't believe you weren't married. Never in a million years. I almost wept the first time I heard that because I couldn't believe in all these years no one had ever sent you roses. And looking back, it wasn't because you weren't worthy. 
um, it wasn't that the timing wasn't right because I think God mm -hmm. was protecting you. Yes. And and He was really preserving you. Yeah. And He was getting ready to promote me with you. So yes. I am eternally grateful uh, for the <laughs> chance. And then uh, we got married. And um, man, what a wedding that was. And we have a few pictures that we'd just like to share yes. with our viewers. Um, first of all, the first picture I think we're going to see is is Ruth and I, I proposed to Ruth on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, but that's, uh, well, that's with Andrew. That's in New York City. Um, his favorite movie is Home Alone. Home Alone 2, they got lost in New York, so he wanted to go. But that's where I proposed to my wife at the Lincoln Memorial. And uh, this is uh, half of us. That's at the Biltmore, Biltmore House, House in Asheville, North Carolina. And that's the Christmas car. There's beautiful Hannah. And Andrew was born the day President Obama became president. And uh, there's J Lo's sister. That's my wife, Ruth, on the right. Can I get an amen? <laughs> But man, God has been too good to us. And um, I just thank God for you. Uh, Ruth, um, God's used you in your own way in the ministry. Um, I, God answered every one of my prayers with you. And you know what, Frank? Um, even I was praying for, for a man that, who loves him. But somehow I was, I, I was fearing that um, being a preacher is going to be hard because yeah. You know, being a uh, a pastor's daughter, you know, and and it's it's just a lot of sacrifice, mm -hmm. but it's uh, also a joy to serve the Lord. And for in one side, I want I wanted to marry a, a a man of God, a preacher, but on the other side, I knew how much people because a lot of people don't know how much people suffer in ministry, mm -hmm. and it's, it requires a lot of sacrifice, but. Uh, but we know that the, our rewards is in heaven, Amen. and and that. But I I knew deep inside when I met you, that you were the one, and in many ways it's it's like I said before, time will not be enough to to tell everybody mm -hmm. our story. But uh, thank God for bringing us. Oh well, together. thank you so much. And in our closing moments, I just want to really encourage you, uh, Ruth and I. We really do live completely by faith. And um, I'm not even going to ask for a donation at this time. We could sure use it, but I just want to go straight to the chase. The reason I left Washington by faith is because we want to see people saved. That's Ruth's heartbeat. That's my heartbeat. That's Jesus' heartbeat. And with these last fleeting seconds, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to know one thing. God loves you. It's as easy as the ABCs. If you've never trusted Christ, right now, watch your at. Pray this prayer. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, I want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And C, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Jesus, change me. Take me to heaven. Help me live for you on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to go to the amen corner. Go to Twitter. Give us a shout out. And we want to rejoice with you. See you next week as you live by faith. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today.